So we sell homes every day as professionals. However, the experience is very different when you are selling your own personal residence full of emotions, memories, and, and just that place of stability in your life. Selling your home might sound like a simple and like transactional, but it is not. It is a process that is going to take a huge emotional toll on you. So in that process, a lot of the time, what we see is people are uh, physically exhausted, mentally exhausted too. However, I also find that when the house actually hits the market, that is when the emotional piece really starts to come in because there are a lot of factors that are now out of your control. But what I'm going to talk about today is really the steps you can take to mentally prepare to sell your home. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Jennifer Queen with the Jennifer Queen team and Remax Professionals here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Be sure to hit that like button if you haven't already and subscribe to our channel. But let's get into it. So step number one is embrace change. And I know that's really easy to say and much different in practice. But what I will say is embracing the change is something that I find the people that have the best experiences are the most accepting of the change coming. Uh, now, not all change is good. There are a lot of people that are selling their home for positive reasons, like they're upsizing, their family's growing, uh, they they just need more space, and it's an upgrade. But that's not always the case. Sometimes people are selling their home because of difficulty, strife, um, divorce, and a variety of other reasons. So. That change is gonna hit them much harder for sure, because there's not as much that they are looking forward to on the other side. But honestly, acceptance of the new reality always makes things so, so much easier. And just recognize that this transition is really opening up a world of possibilities. There are plenty of positives that come, can come out on the other side, regardless of why you are moving. Change can be an exciting and enriching and fulfilling experience if you are just willing to embrace it and just willing to say what comes, comes and I'm ready for it. Step number two is to detach emotionally. This is so hard for me to tell people to do because I know that myself personally, if you were to ask me to sell my current home, I would be devastated. It's the home I brought my babies home to. This was their home and I have those memories tied to here. But what I encourage you to do is view the home as just that, an inanimate object. The memories are up here, not within this home. And the more that you're able to detach the emotional from the house itself, the better the process will be for you. In doing so, you're also better able to look at the home from the perspective of a buyer so that you can kind of see it as a product that you are selling. I know that sounds horrible, but as a product that you are seeing and how to make it appeal to a broader range of buyers. So take that emotional aspect out of it and just view it neutrally and you're going to find that the staging, the renovations, etc., is all so much easier when you're not emotionally attached to the home. Tip number three, set some realistic expectations. Before even putting your home on the market, it's important to start having those discussions with the professionals to arrive at what are realistic expectations. Get an understanding of what the average days on market is. Get an average understanding of what a reasonable selling price is based on list price. There's a lot of people that emotionally attach to their home and if a lower offer comes in, they're so offended that and take it personally that it really hinders the negotiation process. So just getting comfortable with what is realistic and what the market is currently doing will go a long way and really aid you in a win-win situation when those negotiations start. Tip number four is to declutter and organize. This is probably one of the most crucial steps when you are preparing your home for sale. I know I've said it in videos before, I will continue saying it in videos, but clutter eats equity. And it's no more true than when we're working on the initial stages of that staging plan. 
that you need to get rid of as much as you possibly can. Uh, within reason, of course, talk to your realtor before you go too, too crazy and off the deep end and try and sell a completely vacant home because that might not be the right advice for your situation. However, what you can do to eliminate as much of the noise and busyness around the house the better. Keep in mind the process is incredibly tedious. The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step and I personally believe that the best way to navigate this process is to break it down room by room. Start in one room, work your way through decluttering that room before you move on to the next one room at a time. Small bite-sized pieces is what you need at this point. And again, get your realtor involved early in the process so that you at least have some kind of guideline on what should be staying in each room. I know that for us, we bring in a stager, we walk room by room with you, and then even then stuff can be overwhelming. So we assemble a checklist for you that goes room by room of what should stay and what should go so that you can start working through that on your own time. And there are even services we utilize too if this is a more substantial project or if you're selling it for say a, an estate or a family member that has really been a, quite a hoarder. There are different steps and levels we can address here. But in general, get that realtor in early so that you can formulate that plan. Tip number five is seek support. I have seen a lot of sellers want to keep things secretive. Uh, they've told me don't tell the neighbors don't tell them don't tell people what we're doing kind of thing but I find the more secretive people are about the process the harder they find the process emotionally it's good to seek help from friends family therapists unless you've got a really messed up personal situation then that might be a little bit different uh, but in general these people are rooting for you and they want to see you succeed and they're gonna step up and help in ways you might not have imagined. Sometimes it's as simple as stopping by with a box of pizza when they know you're overwhelmed. Um, I've seen it before. So allowing people in that, as long as they're coming from a good place, of course, to assist, really helps remove some of that emotional burden. And keep in mind, no matter how secret you try to keep this, people are going to find out anyways. Eventually the sign goes up or eventually the listing is live on the internet and somebody's going to share it on Facebook or somewhere else where they see it and people are going to find out. It's going to be out there. It's better to get everybody on board in advance versus after when they feel like they've been completely left out. If the nervousness comes because you're concern about what they're going to say, perhaps because this isn't the best situation, perhaps because you are moving because of divorce or something like that. It's good to have a line prepared that you can share with others that are nosy. Uh, and in all honesty, like the line I've always seen be the most successful for my clients in situations like this, and I tell them to use it time and time again, we're moving because it will be better for me and my family or me and leave it at that. That's, and if they ask again, just give that line again. You are a professional public speaker. If you don't want to share, there's nothing saying you have to share and people should be willing to respect that boundary. Tip number six is having a really good understanding of the process itself. So uh, before I kind of talked about like what getting an understanding of the market, this is more process driven, what I mean here. So like how do bookings work? How does feedback work? How much notice or showings giving? If somebody writes you an offer, what's a realistic expectation in terms of time frame to respond? Uh, open houses, are you doing those? Kind of getting a sense of all the pieces that move with the sale process is important here. The more you understand the process, the more comfortable you will feel. People feel far more nervous. The less communication there is, the less information they have, they feel kind of out of control in the process. So we have a checklist. If ever you want one, just reach out. I can send you a copy of it. But essentially what it says is all the things to consider through the process. And we also have an email series that starts to go out as things start to happen. So your first showing request has come in. Here's what to expect. Here's how you should leave the home. Here's uh, best practices to result in successful showings. Uh, we personally like to break it down into bite-sized pieces with a few overview things so people know what's coming down the pike. 
there's a lot to know. So, and there's no harm in asking more questions if you're still uncomfortable with the process. Tip number seven, do your best and forget the rest. Now, there is a great book written by Chris Voss called Never Split the Difference. And it's gonna sound funny, but he speaks at a lot of real estate conferences or on real estate podcasts. And he, it might not seem like the two industries are linked, but essentially his background is that of a former FBI negotiator, and he would negotiate for people in hostage situations and in really scary situations overseas, family members being brutally abused and whatnot. I know it doesn't sound like it's very similar, but he likens a lot of that process to sellers in the state of selling. Of course, it is not life and death. That is not what I'm trying to imply here. Rather, what he likens it to is you can do everything you can to prepare your home for sale, make sure it shows well, make sure it's marketed well, make sure it's priced well. But after that, you are opening your door to complete strangers that you do not know, obviously they're strangers, uh, to come into your home and decide if they like it or not. And it's an incredibly personal and kind of out of control feeling that you're going to feel as the buyers start to tour and they don't like your house. This often leaves sellers feeling so completely out of control because there's nothing else they can really do at that point. Keep in mind that it takes between 10 and 12 showings, at least here in Winnipeg, it's probably different in other markets, to get one offer. So for all of those showings, the majority are not gonna like your home. A high proportion are not gonna like your home. It's just not gonna be the one for them, and that's okay. Keep in mind too, you probably wouldn't like the homes that they ultimately choose anyways. So uh, that everybody has their own personal preference, and that's okay. There is a buyer out there for your home, that I do promise you. It's just a matter of getting those numbers right to get the right amount of traffic through to result in that offer. And and unfortunately, we are leaving that process to chance. And step number eight is to visualize your next chapter. So when I was talking a little bit earlier about embracing the future, this really goes a little bit deeper into that. Take time to visualize yourself in your next home. Get excited about it. Get really raring, ready to go. Maybe start designing some rooms in your home, designing some furniture layouts, whatever you want to do but get excited about the next place. Having a clear vision of your next step really leads to the greatest success for those people that are selling their home currently. And those are honestly my best eight steps to mentally preparing for your home being for sale. I'm not gonna lie, it is emotionally draining and unnerving and scary having strangers within your home and just praying that they like it and the process leading up to it isn't easy either but it is going to be worth it and right for you in the long run and you always just have to keep your mind on that prize at the very end and just remember why you're doing this all in the first place so again i'm jennifer queen with the jennifer queen team and remax professionals here in winnipeg manitoba if you have any comments you would like to add about what you did to mentally prepare for putting your home on the market be sure to hit me up in the comments section below i love reading those comments and of course be sure to hit the like button if you found value in the content today and subscribe to our channel we're coming out with a ton of new content this year so thanks again for watching stay tuned